Hey everyone, welcome to part one of our six part course. Today we will be getting into the load rundown, which is inevitably the first task that our graduate engineers do when they first arrive at a, a design consultancy. So for the, for the uh, load rundown of vital importance is understanding derivation of dead loads, superimposed uh, dead loads and live loads and the differences. So we'll go through all the loading uh, on, on a structure just to get a better understanding. So first of all, dead load is defined as the weight of the static materials contained within a structure. And they, all these notes can be found in, in the booklet that was provided. So the dead loads can include the sulfate of the structure as well as the materials it is supporting that are fixed to it. Uh, the super and dead load, superimposed dead loads uh, in comparison is the dead load minus the weight of the existing element that you're designing for. And then uh, different to that is the live load. So that's all the, the movable items in the building. So the furniture, the livestock. So loads like this can be uh, one day, someone might have one person in the apartment, next day they'll have 10. So we'll get into something like the live load reduction factor later, which takes into account the less probability that every, every floor will be loaded to the same amount. Next we have uh, dynamic loads, which is, so whereas the dead and live loads are considered to be static, so that meaning like moving slowly, however dynamic loads might be something vibrating, so in a plant room you might have mechanical equipment vibrating which affects the structure, or uh, for a wind gust, so as it pushes on, on one part of the building and then it's, the building might start oscillating. Wind and earthquake when you get to later in, in uh, the stability, but Wind, of course, is important, but it, it uh, becomes increasingly important with height. As a building gets taller, the wind becomes stronger, and then pressure is to the square of, of wind. So they're the loads. What's going to be important for the load rundown, what we're going to cover in this, is the dead and live loads and, and knowing the difference. So the whole goal of the load rundown is to determine the dead and live loads on each element. So then after this you can do the, the column design for every column and, and produce a column schedule. Also uh, passing the loads which might be needed to, to find out, estimate uh, the sizes for transfers and things like retention. So the first step in finding out the value for the load rundown for each column is to determine the area around every column or, or predict the, the area attracted to one column. So for our, our example here at grid E3, the way to do this is work at the halfway point between each column to the column we're looking at. So here we got, say, at grid 2, we got 8.2 metres, so at 4.1 it's halfway, and to the top part we've got a wall uh, just between E and F, so halfway between that is 1.4 metres, and so forth. So this can be done using a computer, but easily done by hand also. So what we come up with here is 37 metres squared for our column. So what we're going to do next is uh, discuss the moment shear factor. So what I've done here is done a general um, setup so all these pin supports represent columns. So obviously this is going to be different for every situation and every load run down you do. But to just explain the fact of the effect of the moment shear factor is like when, when you draw the bending moment diagram, obviously the end edges are going to be zero for the bending moment and it's going to come a little bit higher for the first internal support then go in a bit more as it goes uh, to more central and again the first internal support will be a bit higher than here. So what the bending moment diagram is going to end up looking something like is that. So as you can see here it, uh, it goes up a lot for the first internal support and it'll be a bit less. So in reality this first column is attracting a little bit more load than this column here and this column here. And back to here, so it'll be a, bit, a little, little bit less for that, but still this is more, uh, probably likely to be a large moment shear factor than this one. And then this one will go back down and up. And again, back to zero. Back to zero here. So what we, what we can derive from this is that the moment shear factor here, or the load attracted, will be the column on the first internal support. And the columns on the edges will uh, be a little bit less, but what we're going to get into next is calculating the, the real moment shear factor. So I have to repeat, this is just for one setup only, 
this is going to be different for every setup you have. So if you've got a cantilever support at first, it's going to be very different to having uh, pin supports at the very edges. So calculate the moment shear for every single run until you get a better understanding as an engineer. And then, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to eventually do it by eye. So the first thing you need to do in calculating the moment shear factor is to measure the distance between each column support or walls or the edges. So from there, we have an example here. So we have calculated the distance looking at here. So on grid three, going down, looking at run one on grid three, we've got three metres to the first uh, wall and then eight metres to the next column, 8.5 and so forth. So if I looked, if I set that up, and this is in, in the, the workbook, what we have here is a 3 plus 3 on 2 is 1.5 metres and 5.5 metres, so it's exactly the equal distance between each support and that uh, is known as the simply supported reactions. The next step is to put a 1 kilonewton metre uh, line load on, on the whole run to determine the real reactions. So as we can see in the booklet here, we have done this on a program called MicroStream, which is, there's many programs out there to do this, and then we are, have the real reactions. So if we have a one kilonewton per meter load, if the moment shear factor was one, that means the real reaction will be equal to the simply supported reaction. But as we saw uh, before in, in the demonstration is, the first pin support has a reaction of uh, 0.86 meters. So what it really should be if it was the moment shear factor was one would be two meters because it's attracting from the halfway point. And then uh, the next one, the reaction is 7.17 meters. The next one is 7.87 meters. So as we briefly mentioned before, in this scenario, the moment shear factor is uh, for this one greater than one. So 7.17 again is the real reaction of it divided by the simply supported reaction, which was just basically the halfway distance between the first support, which was a wall, and the second support was a column. So two meters plus 4.1 meters. So now we've calculated the area for the column and also the moment shear factor, which represents the load that is really attracted to the column. We can now continue the load rundown. So for this column, we calculated an area of 37 meters squared. So this was the, by just, uh, measuring the distances between this column and all the supports and calculating a polygon around the column. Also, we did a moment shear factor. So what we showed is the moment shear factor for one direction, but in reality, what we need to do is for both directions. So, Looking at it for both directions, what we ended up with is 1.18 for the uh, east-west direction and then also 1.2 for the north-south direction. So what that gives us is an increase in 38% attracted to the load. So what's this saying is in reality, there is 38% area attracted to the load than the simply supported reactions. So in MicroStrand, or how we modelled it was with pin supports. In reality, uh, the columns will be much stiffer than just a pin. So using programs or structural analysis programs, you might be able to get this figure down to less than 38%. But for the purpose of this course, we will just uh, model it as pins just to demonstrate the point. So now we have the area and the moment shear factor. So this represents the load attracted to this one column. So next we're going to derive the load. So what we've already gone through is the dead and the live loads. So let's assume this is going to be an apartment building. Uh, let's say it's a six story apartment building. So with level six to level two uh, apartment. So the level six to level two apartment. So for this, we'll, we're going to break it up into dead loads, live loads, so here, the dead load here will have, our, say, a, a typical uh, slab of 200 for an apartment equals 5 kPa, which is like, uh, it's going to be 0.2 times, that's the, the depth, times the density, which is 24.5 times the area, t 
times the extra load, the simply supported area multiplied by the moment shear factor extra times 37 times 1.38. And then we got SDL. So for the department, it's, it's important to understand how the SDL is, is derived. So it's gonna be different from for, for every type of building you got. For an apartment, it's gonna be roughly 1.5 kPa or kilopascals. So you get again, multiply that by the area, multiply by the, the adjusted real load that's attracted to it. And then uh, on top of that, you are going to have the column self weight, coal self weight, we'll call it equals. So that's gonna again, maybe three metre floor to floor height for the apartment times We'll, we'll make up a name, just a roughly maybe 0 0.4 times 0 0.4, so that's B times W, H, that's the volume, times the density, which is gonna be 24.5 kPa. So then the dead load is the sum of all this. So these are all the, the dead loads for this column for level six to level two. And then uh, also we got the live load, which is, for an apartment, it's going to be roughly uh, in in uh, Australia anyway, 1.5 kilopascals for most apartments. So, what this what we'll also get this into the column design is there is in most codes there's going to be a live load reduction factor. So what this represents is that not every floor is going to be loaded to the absolute maximum because all the loads are derived in most codes are for the absolute maximums and it's going to be a way over designed if we design for the full 1.5 kPa at each floor. So for this stage, I go live load reduction. So we can reduce that maybe by 50% down the track. So what we've calculated here is the load for one column and uh, from level six to level. So the sum of all the dead loads here for this one level equals 344 kilonewtons. And the sum of the live load, or which is just the one, is 77 kilonewtons. So as you can tell here, the slab is the large uh, proportion of the load, which is 255 kilonewtons. And same with the SDL, with the column self weight being the least. So you might feel like you need to reiterate the dimensions here after your design, but really it's, it's negligible. And uh, uh, one engineer who's very successful once told me you need to be accurate and not precise with engineering. So as we said, this is for one floor only. What we need to do now is calculate for the five floors up, up to level two. So times five, times five, because 17, 20 kilonewton dead load and equals 385 kilonewtons live load. So that means up to level two, these are the loads. So when we can design now up until the level one uh, level column. So in summary of what we've covered in, in this section is the load run now, which is very important to design most vertical elements in the building, columns, transfers, walls, and everything. So this will be uh, very important throughout the whole design process and very important to get right early on. So the first thing we need to do is uh, determine the dead and live loads of each floor of the building. So this is simply done by looking at the architectural drawings. Is it a, an apartment building or is it an office building? And then uh, put in the, the dead and live loads, or the, the right dead and live loads for each floor. So next we need to calculate the area attracted to each column. And uh, next we need to calculate the moment shear factor for each column. So we need this by doing a run in either direction for each and then working out the real load that's attracted by putting a one kilonewton meter uh, line load on each direction and and so forth to calculate the moment shear factor. Next we do a load rundown for the column so multiplying the SDL and live load by the real area and get the load for each floor and then get the cumulative load as we go down the building. So this is a very iterative process and, and we need to do this for almost every column in the building or every representative column. So this would be a, a long process doing by hand. So the most effective process of doing this is the spreadsheet. But what this course is to show you is how it's done and what you need to be able to do is verify the spreadsheet to know that everything is accurate in your design because the column design is one of the most important aspects of the building and the load rundown is, is therefore very important.